Hey everybody, Andrew here from Pacific Coast Auto and today we're going to be going over the results of round two of our current auction picks contest. Before we get started though, I want to remind everybody that our current contest leader is Rhea Davino. He had an 86% guess in round one, which means he's just 14% off the selling price. If anybody can beat that 14% in round two, they will be the winner of the contest. So I'm not going to waste any more time, let's just jump right into it. Bill Courtney's Toyota Mark II sold for $1,080, giving him a 65% guess. Not good enough for the win. Yamari Ripa Lima's Toyota Century sold for $2,300, making his guess 152% of the selling price. Raymond Yu's Toyota Corona GT sold for $4,990, making his guess a 137%. Unfortunately for Sean William Bellamy, his Subaru Legacy Wagon sold through negotiation, so the price was not made public. Unfortunately, without a price, I can't get a percent, so this entry is going to have to get scrapped. Mitch Cowie's BMW M3 Coupe sold for $12,290, making his guess 70%. Leslie Lee's Toyota Corolla 11 went unsold, and it got bid up to $4,890. Even if that had been the selling price, still way off. Yoni Esparza's Toyota Cresta sold for $1,050, also giving him a 70% guess. Jefferson Paraiso's Nissan Stagia also sold through negotiation. Again, no price, no percent, that one's out. We had two guesses on the Mitsubishi Lancer Evo wagon, and unfortunately for both of those people, Raymond Chim Hang Liang and Jose Ovale, the car was unsold and removed from auction, so you're both out of luck. Victor Sancho's Porsche 911 was unsold and got no bids. David Len Sunase's Alfa Romeo GT sold for $900. That made his guess 139% of the selling price. Justin Thomas's Mercedes G500 sold for $24,090. That makes his guess 102% of the selling price. 2% is going to be tough to beat and there's only one entry left. Derek Cleverly's Toyota Soros sold for $4,230, which makes his guess 45% of the selling price. So that means Justin Thomas, with his 102% guess on the Mercedes G500, is the winner of our current auction contest. Congratulations, Justin. Hey guys, it's Derek here, ready to show you the vehicles, your picks from Facebook. We got, I think, seven of them this time. Uh, this week, not as popular as it usually is. I don't know if everybody's sleeping or what's going on there, but we got seven of your picks, and actually we got to pick... Uh, one for every person that submitted a vehicle, and so that's pretty cool. Uh, a couple of things first. Uh, congratulations to Justin Thomas. You won the competition by being only 2% off of the price pick last time. We're going to send you a box of goodies, and we had thought that we're going to send you like a, a short little video clip of what you're going to get so that everyone can see the awesomeness that comes in your box of JDM goodies. Kind of like a loot crate, but way cooler than... Uh, crappy loot, <laughs> loot crate things because you don't have to pay for it. You just get it for free. It's, it's basically a free box of Japanese cool stuff. Anyways, we're going to be getting a video of that. We're going to uh, be buying the stuff today. We're going to get a video of that, but we want it to be a surprise for Justin when he opens that box to see all the cool rad things that he has. And so we're not going to post that video up until after we've confirmed that he's received that. Now, if your name is Justin Thomas and uh, you are listening to this, we're going to send you a message on Facebook. But if your policies or, or your settings on Facebook don't allow you to receive messages from companies, because that's one of the things that you can pick on Facebook, um, send us a quick email so that we have your email address. Okay, that being said, I do have one thing I want to mention before we get into this one here. Uh, I'm considering making a change to these videos. This is the 66th video that we've put up, and I think that a small group of people really very much like these videos and like to you know listen to them in the background when they're doing other things. Kind of fun to see the cars that are up at auction. Uh, especially if you are not familiar with what vehicles are up at auction. Uh, but here's the thing is making these videos, it takes a lot of time. We're a fairly busy company. And beyond that, I think that there's kind of a unique opportunity here for us to change these videos from the current form where you guys submit them from Facebook and then change this over to a live streaming version of the same kind of thing. So that way you can supply the links in, in real time as we go. And so that's going to cut down on the amount of time that we have to put into these videos and also can be a little bit more fun because you can ask questions as we go or you, you can make comments as we go or um, 
you can even uh, just like ask regular questions to me that are not in uh, that don't have anything to do with the vehicles that we're looking at through auction here and so let me know uh, what you think about that I do expect some comments to hear what you think about live streaming this and we can live stream on twitch or we can live stream on direct on Facebook we might want to do both of them I'm not really sure because I don't do any live streaming so I don't know which one's better so if you have a recommendation twitch or Facebook and which one you think would work better for our style of videos we may be able to do it on both like I said um, but we don't have any followers on Twitch, so it would be a little bit strange. We don't even have an account on Twitch now, so probably the first one would be on Facebook in the very least. But I would like to know what you think about that, so please post the comments in the comment section. Okay, jumping right in here, seven picks. First one, Raymond Yu sent in this one, HAA Kobe. It is a Nissan Pulsar GTI-R. A lot of people know about these vehicles, but not everybody, and so let's just run down a quick overview of it. It's an SR20 Group A rally car. And so Group A came right after Group B. Group B was the rally that killed everybody because they didn't have strict limitations on the amount of power your vehicle could have. And then Group A has the restrictor uh, limiting you to somewhere around 250 horsepower or so. And in order to qualify for that, you needed to sell at least 500 cars. So a lot of manufacturers uh, entered this rally at that time. It was very good for sales. And this was Nissan's vehicle for the Group A. So it's a four-wheel drive turbocharged SR20 and comes with I think 200 and 220 to 250 240 somewhere in there in terms of horsepower it's a little bit different than the Sylvia version of the engine in multiple different ways to make it more suitable to rally it is weird because it's transverse and I guess this and the Bluebird had transverse mounted SR20 engines and uh, I think that they're really good cars. One of the downsides is that they weren't taken care of very well most of the time so the market doesn't have that many that are available that come up for auction that are in reasonable condition and they're importable to the usa which means prices are kind of uh astronomical for this vehicle at the moment but this one looks like it has stock wheels stock exhaust and is in a rather rare color here uh, in fact raymond mentioned in uh in his comment nissan pulsar gti r four-wheel drive rare in chili red and most of the ones I've seen have been either white or black. And so I'm not sure if I have seen one in red that hasn't had peeling paint all over it. So let's look at the condition of this one. And if we did these video, uh, videos live stream, then people who want to get the full translation of the sheet would be able to request that, uh, perhaps. Usually I just kind of run through the main points on here. And so it's a 1990 Pulsar GTI R, five-speed manual. Actually, we 3.5 with an interior grade B. The body looks to be pretty amazing. All of these marks are only grade 1 marks, and so that's a very uh, small amount of damage. And then interior is slightly dirty and scratched seat wear. Battery is dead. Left folding mirror doesn't work. Exterior has some paint fade and one part peeling. There you go. Red paint from the 90s is going to fade and or peel. It looks like it might just be on the plastic bits which tend to be the area of the car that fades first, maybe on this rear spoiler. And it doesn't look like it in the picture, but this spoiler is really big. And actually, it looks like they took a picture of a whale's tail and then grafted it onto the back of the car somehow. Okay, so aftermarket uh, steering wheel and suspension. Winter tires on here. Underside has corrosion and is painted. Corrosion is a big problem with the Pulsars, unfortunately. But because... It's on basically all of them. You might, you know, if it were me, I would consider a car with corrosion on the underside. If 99% of them have corrosion, you, you just buy it, assuming you're going to have to repair it and then repair it. <clears throat> so 182, 20 kilometers. Uh, really, really top end condition for Pulsar GTI R, uh, despite the kind of higher ish mileage on it. But uh, I would say we're looking at about eight. 890 to about 1.2 million is the range and to give it a uh, like a set price i'm going to say 1.1 million on this one okay on to number two sent in from jefferson paracio and jefferson haha you are a super funny guy <laughs> if you watched my video of the toy cars that we just bought uh, there was a smart car and smart cars make me uh, uncontrollably throw toy cars across the room 
Uh, and if you watch us on Facebook, you would see the aftermath of that. I have destroyed one of my precious toy cars that I bought. But the good news is it's only a Smart 4.2, and so not really big deal. So this is a second generation one where I believe they fixed some of the major problems with it. The Smart 4.2, their first generation, had a manual gearbox that automatically shifted the gears. And that kind of gearbox is just super terrible. And I think it was like a two-speed gearbox. And then it was so bad that in the next generation they changed it over to just like a, a single speed or, or something. I don't know. Anyways, I don't know enough about the car because... Uh, I mean, <laughs> there's not an awful lot of interest in me to know things about this car. So, there we go. Uh, I hear that they're terrible to drive. I hear the suspension and the steering is really bad. The short wheelbase makes the ride really terrible. The transmission doesn't shift very well. And it gets worse fuel economy than basically any other subcompact car. So, no, really no reason to buy it unless you want people to look at you and question your ability to make decisions in life. This is a 2009, and I'm sorry to anyone who's watching this who has a smart car. I'm being fairly savage on the smart car. Uh, I don't like the car, but I'm, I'm very sorry because I don't want to hurt your feelings at the same time, which I already have done. I'm sorry. Okay, uh, Octarade 4, interior B, uh, paint fade on the roof, but otherwise a good-looking body. Someone had the, mis uh, the displeasure of driving this 60,000 kilometers. Automatic transmission has AC in it. Uh, really no marks on here, so condition is rather good other than that paint fade. As for price, I don't know. I, I don't watch smart car prices, so... Mm, 200,000 yen is my guess. Okay, on to the next one, and thanks a lot, Jefferson. I, I really needed that in my day. <laughs> Leslie Lee and Jose Oval both sent in this one. This is a super lucky one to see at the auction. Not only because it is a weird baby blue, smoky blue color. This is an S208, which is a limited edition version of the Impreza. And this is the 8th generation of the limit... 8th generation? I think so. 8th generation of the limited production versions. So the first one was an S201, and then the next year they made an S202, and then an S203, and this is the S208. And they make these, I think they make them every year, or maybe every other year, or something, or maybe in, in every new generation, I'm not too sure, but the very first one was based off the GC8, and I think it came out in like 1994 or something. And uh, they're, they're basically a higher power version of the Impreza WRX STI with the odd changes here and there. And this version of it did come out in the US and they made 200 of them, I think 200, 200 of them for the US and uh, they're called the Impreza RA there, which is kind of a dumb name for it because it's not an RA. They sell the RA in Japan and then they sell the um, the S20 something as, as a separate model. It's, it's kind of like a, a pricier version of the car. The RA is the raced uh, race prepped, stripped down version with manual manual windows and stuff like that. Okay, you can tell the this version of it because it has an extra duct here in the back and then it has the different front bumper and different rear spoiler. It looks like we have a black roof. That's probably part of the package. And this is basically a new car too. And the reason why this is so weird to find at auction is because these are super limited edition cars and they generally sell out within about 30 minutes of going on sale. And they usually go on sale at the Tokyo Motor Show here in Japan and they're all gone and nobody gets a chance to buy some. And so it's weird that somebody managed to buy one and is able to sell it at auction. And so the prices of these, I looked it up because I wanted to be correct about this. And the mileage is only 20 kilometers, which is basically just your transportation in Japan mileage. And maybe a little bit of fun time for uh, the person who bought this. And uh, they start at 5.7 million, but they go up to 6.5 million, depending on the, the spec that it is. And the higher spec version of the S208 is the Nürburgring package, which this one is. And so this one would retail at around 6.5, but because it's so limited edition and everybody wants these, they generally sell for higher than you buy them for on the used market, even when they have 5,000, 10,000, 15,000 kilometers on them. And so this one, uh, I'm going to guess the price at the end, I guess, just to keep the same formatting. So let's go over the condition here. It is an April 2018 WRX S208 Nürburgring Challenge Package Carbon Rear Wing. 
version. So I guess that's an option on the back. This is an S grade, which basically means it's a new car, six speed manual transmission. And let's see, BBS 19 inch wheels, uh, dry carbon roof. I don't know what a, oh, dry carbon roof. Okay, that's cool. Carbon rear wing, 208 exclusive. Original Recaro, Recaro inside. Uh, what is this? The writing is really small, so bear with me for a sec. Front under spoiler. Okay, uh, it says something engine STI. Uh, something I can't read. And then uh, 329 PS, and so that would be basically 320 horsepower. Uh, intercooler washer. Now this is a little bit weird. It says 350 are made, but then it says the serial number is 189 out of 450. I know some of the earlier models were just limited to 250, I think, so they may be making more of them now, now that they've become kind of a thing. Brembo calipers and uh, black door mirrors? Hmm. Wow, what a sales point. First time at auction, obviously, and uh, no damage to it. And so price-wise, I think that we could realistically see up to about $7.8 million on this one, which is a pretty hefty profit for somebody who's flipping this. And you can bet next year that same dealer is not going to get the chance to buy another one of these because Subaru doesn't want speculators on these. They want people who are going to drive them and enjoy them instead of make money that Subaru could be making if they just upped the price anyway. Okay, on to the next one, Yoani Esparza. Always sending these in. Thank you, Yoani, for being a cool dude. Hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Um, <clears throat> and Yoani says, clean-looking golf. And it is a clean-looking golf. The Mark II is a classic car now, which is weird, because this is one of the popular cars in high school when I was a high school student, grad class 2000. And so it's weird when that happens. It really makes you feel old. And what really makes me feel old is you can you used to be able to buy these for $500 all day long. And even ones without rust on them. I know they're all rusty now. But here in Japan, they're strangely expensive. So if there are good condition ones in your country, send them to Japan and sell them. Because they cost more here than any other country that I'm aware of. Except for maybe Germany, oddly. I've seen a few of them heading back to Germany. None of them sold by us. We've never bought a Mark II. In fact, the only Mark Ones that we've bought have been Cabriolets. And they're very expensive here too. Mark 3s are very cheap. Mark 4s are very, very cheap unless it's an R32. But the Mark 2, I guess the classic looks of it are very appealing. Now this one's not, an, uh, not a GTI according to the auction sheet. Um, it's just a regular 1800cc 8-valve Volkswagen Golf. 182,000 kilometers on it. Color changed. That's a, that's a no-no for this car, I would think. A lot of color changed Golfs out there, but if you're going to be trying to capitalize on the classicness of the car you're going to want original paint Octary 3.5 interior C plus a color changed might mean rust repairs at some point too because the age of the car 1992 uh, they're going to have rust around them in 80 or 90 percent of the models what do we got here aftermarket exhaust and exhaust header aftermarket steering wheel Kragus 13.4 I think maybe that's I don't even know what that is. Oh, I'm sorry. There, Look right here. In between the ku and the la, you're supposed to have a dash here. And there is kind of one if you look. It's cooler. So AC gas has been changed to 134. So that's the new style instead of the R, R, R12 is R134. And the hood is made out of FRP or fiberglass reinforced plastic. Interior dirty scratch, seat wear and stain, oil leak, interior uh, liner comes up and the body looks to be in pretty good shape. Just the, the color change paint being the one thing. Because when you color change the paint, uh, number one, it never turns out as good. It doesn't last as long, but it's not original anymore. And you need original paint for uh, to maintain your value for a classic car. Which, if this isn't a classic car in your country now, wait five or ten years and there's going to be no more of them left. Uh, especially since they're a popular car for kind of like young tuning people. Or at least they were when I was younger. 
Okay, good uh, good one to send in there. How much is it going to sell for? I think that we're going to see this one go... Is it 5-speed or auto? Let's see, 5-speed? I think we'll see it go for 580,000 yen. Okay, on to the next one. Mitch Cowie, and he says, The title translation, though. Take a look. BMW M model M3 Gedo Rug Cross Mission. Uh, that was computer translated from the original auction one, and I'll show you what that says in just a sec. I assume they were trying to refer to the fact that this is a dog leg transmission M3. The Sport Evolution wing and front lip spoiler are a nice touch. So have a look. The Sport Evolution spoiler is the same spoiler, but there's an extra lip added to it that looks way cooler in real life than these pictures show. Well, that's a shame. And then, fr ah, front lip. Come on. Loading, loading. Maybe I have too many pictures up. Let's try that again. No, it's just being fussy. Okay, so the E30 M3, this is one of our unicorn cars. Nobody has yet bought one, and I'm, I swear we've been on about 50 of them so far. Very bad uh, bid-to-win ratio, so you can tell how excited that I am when we receive emails that say, I want to buy an E30 M3. We also get the same feeling for the 8.6, the um, Toyota AE 8.6. Almost everyone who inquires about that doesn't buy them. And we just got one today. And he's like, I want to buy one for uh, $1,800. And then I looked at it, and it, my estimation for that would have been about $10,000. And so we get a lot of that kind of person inquiring. Okay, so this auction sheet, I have to say, this is lovely. This writing is very easy to read compared to a lot of them and so I love that especially being somebody who has to squint at the screen a lot in order to read really tiny stupid writing usually the report section here is really nice and then the seller doesn't realize how bad the scans are going to be and so they write too small or they try to cram in too many things okay so the name of this one is BMW M3 but here it says Getrag Cross Mission and so Cross Mission is a Japanese word for close ratio close ratio transmission and in this case it is a dog leg box and a dog leg box is a little bit weird because instead of your regular one two three four five you have the one down and off to the side because when you're racing you never ever go into one and then it prevents you from accidentally shifting into gear one and then it gives you very easy shifting of each pattern between the four gears that you're going to use and so that's the purpose of it. It is a little bit annoying if you're driving it because it's like one and then two and then three is directly down. And so you have to get used to the difference. Um, I've never actually driven a car with that. This is just my internet knowledge. Yay for the internet, making me seem like I'm smarter than I actually am. Anyways, it's a 1988 BMW M3. Oh, uh, oh, mm, uh, just a regular M3. It isn't the Sport Evo, even though it has the Sport Evo pieces on it. Uh, the Sport Evo also has red stripes right here next to the bumper. And the Sport Evos are 2. Point f I think they made two versions of a 2.3 and a 2.5 version. And then they're the super duper expensive versions of them. Auction rate R, because a lot of these are sadly. Uh, interior C, it's a Getrag close ratio transmission. Um, what does this say? Racing pattern. So basically, they're referring to the dog leg uh, pattern there. Uh, sports Evolution front spoiler. Sports Evolution rear spoiler piece on there. Sunroof BBS 15-inch wheels. Aluminum radiator from company Shirai. BMW Japan original car. This comes with a spare key. Air AC has been converted to R134. Dashboard does not have any cracks in it. That's cool that they wrote that. Uh, in 2006, two camshafts were replaced at 174, 562 kilometers and engine overhaul, but that has been crossed out because most likely they didn't have the paperwork to go along with that. And it has history papers of the inspections in 98. Uh, 2002, 2006, 2007, 2008, and 2010 for everything that was repaired to pass the inspection. Interior dirty and scratched, seat wear, um, front cross member is dented. It looks like a minor accident compared to most, not one that would write off a vehicle per se. Um, definitely with the value of an M3, you probably 
would have to completely burn the car to write it off because the chassis itself has so much value even when it's deformed but uh, no it's just like like three kilometers an hour hit somebody in a parking lot or something uh, exterior paint peeling wheel center caps are missing stern wheel cover is cracked has it like a, let's have a look hmm rear spoiler is a different color no rear board something color color fade uh there's something i can't read there but probably color fade uh wheel scratch door mirror scratch various scratches and dents and then the body here is super duper clean with uh paint cracks in the front spoiler and a scuff i think that's because it's super low Okay, so price-wise, this one's going to be in kind of the top 20% prices, I would think, of M3s that we usually see at auction. And M3 prices, they go like this, like steadily up, but then once they reach the really high kilometers, it's like whoop. Not high kilometers, low kilometers. So low mileage one in very good condition could sell for two to three times one that's only 20% worse condition, just because of the nature of the way classic car prices work. So price-wise for this one, uh, da, 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 da. I'm gonna guess 6.2 million yen on this one. Okay, and we got two more here. Uh, oh, no, one of them is a double. I didn't even realize that. Sorry, Raymond, I'm not gonna show you this one because this is your double. And I give everyone the ability to, to send in more than one car if you like. And uh, But we'll pick which one that we like the best and we accidentally sent this one in, so. Sorry. And this one here is the last one sent in by Bill Courtney. He says, a van with a spoiler, Mazda Bongo. And then in brackets, insert cultural appropriation rant here. Um, cultural appropriation is a weird thing because it's only really a thing in the Western world. Um, I probably would get into trouble if I speak more than that about it. But generally, the people who are our fans on this are not really looking to go around picking fights. But cultural appropriation to me seems like an area where people just feel like picking a fight and that happens to be a topic that they think that they can fight about anyways this is a mazda bongo which is a van made by mazda and yes it has a spoiler on the back and oddly the roof line look it goes up and then it goes down for where the spoiler is i have no idea what's going on there or what the purpose of that would be but it seems like it was engineered and at least for some purpose other than styling because when you stand up, your head only comes to this high. So you wouldn't really be able to see the roof. Kind of weird. Okay, so this is a 1993 Bongo Wagon G SX. I don't know an awful lot about the Mazda Bongos. They were um, sold here as Fords for a little bit, the next generation after this. I think that the looks are very early 1980s, even though this is a 93. And so that's kind of cool. I do like the fog lights here. I like the big plastic face. It kind of looks like a Ninja Turtle, actually. <laughs> if it were painted Ninja Turtle green and then painted this one purple, I bet you everybody would catch that reference. Especially if you had like a little piece of bandana sticking out here. Okay, condition-wise, uh, let's see, auction grade 3.5. It's a four-wheel drive with a 2,000cc gasoline engine. They do have diesel bongos. Five-speed manual, that's pretty cool in a minivan, especially an 80s JDM one. Something like this could be considered really cool in countries other than Japan. If you drove it around here, it would just be like, why hasn't that guy bought a new car? Uh, underside has corrosion, and what is this? Engine doesn't work very well. Mm. Uh, body clear coat has scratches on it. This old-school silver paint has kind of a problem after about 15 or 20 years and it, it tends to break down uh, and then they call that clear coat scratches but you have to repaint it in order to fix it body wise it's good with a big dent over here let's see if we can see that not really and then another big dent over here you can see that one okay and what does the interior look like very 80s looks cheap in 80s but five-speed manual, it's super cool. And then the, the next generation after this one had pop-up tops. And then a bed up top as, a, as an option. And I think they sold more of those than they did the regular van. So it became more of like a, you know, this is a commercial van. Whereas the new version turned more into like a, you know, take the family out for, uh, for camping in our cool Mazda Bongo 
quirky little thing and then kind of left the industrial market alone so that uh, Nissan and Toyota could pick up more sales. Not like these were ever sold in big numbers, I imagine. Maz has always been a very small manufacturer compared to the big ones. Anyways, price on this one, uh, I don't think anyone's really interested in this despite the uniqueness, and so I'm going to guess 100,000 yen on it, and we'll see how we, how we land on that one. Okay, so that's the end there. We're at uh, 28 minutes plus Andrew's part, so we're probably around 30 minutes. That's shorter than usual. But, um, oh, and if you made it this far, let me know how, like, if we're going to do live streaming, we won't have the problem of running out of time or anything like that. We'll just set a standard time and just do it until the time is up. And so they'll all be roughly the same amount of time. So what time would do you think would work the best for you? We typically want to keep these ones around 30 to 45 minutes, somewhere in there, but lower is always a little bit better. Nobody wants to click on like a twin, like a, a super long video. I mean, some people do, but not enough people to make it worth it. Um, so how long do you think it's it's good? 30 minutes? Uh, 45 an hour if it's a live stream there's a little bit more interaction it might be a little bit more interesting to watch a longer video but i don't know i'm a noob at the live streaming okay so we're going to leave that at that and uh, see you again next week i'm not sure when we will be doing the live streaming I'm, I'm not even sure if we will be doing that but let me know what you think in the comments down below anyways see you again next week for probably another recorded one because it's i assume it's going to take longer than a week to work out the live thing before we can do a trial of that but anyway, see you then. Bye-bye.